I like it when I predict things that are happening over one or two years. It makes me feel good. It's like, oh, wow, I, I managed to predict this last year. Apparently now it's very difficult to do that because uh, I'm predicting something and it happens the next day. Um, I made the video a couple of days ago where I said that due to the conflict in Middle East, there is a high possibility, and I'm basing this on what the Prime Minister of Scotland has said that many other journalists are pushing for, that we will get refugees from Palestine and Western Europe in the United States. And what will happen is we're going to see ramping up in censorship. Because obviously people would be in favor of this. Uh, Right-wing uh, evil populists are going to fight with the unpopular left-leaning parties. And they may lose votes. So they will require censorship in order to get people to shut up. We will hear the word Islamophobia, a word that we haven't heard in years, being uttered again. Uh, yet you have here like Kamala Harris, and uh, there, there were a couple of other articles in the press uh, saying that uh, Islamophobia and, uh, is the worst thing that America is uh, facing, and that, uh, uh, what, what is it, Christo-fascist or, or Christian nationalist, another word that I've never heard up until now, but apparently like... If you're a Christian and you love your country, it's a bad thing. Um, and they're worse than Hamas. Like, unironically, that's that's an article. I think it's in Politico. Google it. Look it up. It's a thing. Like, Politico says that uh, Christian nationalists and MAGA supporters are worse than uh, terrorists. Who are killing babies and civilians and old people. Yeah. Unironically, they believe that. Or at least they want you to believe it. Because that's why they put it in the press. So uh, what, what I find fascinating is that uh, there are ample news and evidence that the far left in the United States is far more anti-Semitic than anything I've seen online. I mean, legitimately, I fail to understand what the far left's problem was with Kanye West. If anyone can articulate it, I would love to. Like, Kanye West was a pariah because he was anti-Semitic. Like, that was uh, the reason he lost so many business deals and so many people distanced himself from them. Because uh, he's anti-Semitic. And, and most people that uh, were calling Kanye out were from American universities. Like people on the far left. And uh, in uh, if you go on Twitter right now and you look at some of that the people from universities are saying, like, like some of the stuff that they're putting out, even Kanye would blush. Like even Kanye West, I think, uh, had a limiter, a filter on what he would say. And he wasn't as anti-Semitic as some of the people from American left-leaning universities. Which uh, makes me assume that the reason they were upset with Kanye is because he wasn't anti-Semitic enough. That, like, people on the center, right, people like myself, can call out Kanye and say, Wow, well, dude, like, that's, that's really anti-Semitic. How, how can you say something like that? But you don't hear me then go around and say stuff that's even more anti-Semitic than what Kanye did. But but again, like the internet is filled with examples. The worst one that I have seen was uh, a person from a university that uh, was talking about unironically bringing a knife to a person's throat. And that person was uh, serving on the Trust and Safety Council of that university. Like, just, just let that sink in. Okay, like, again, like, the level of anti-Semitism that I'm seeing right now coming from left-leaning universities, because they all support Democrats. Like, they're not, that's why I'm calling them left-leaning. Like, if you go with a MAGA hat to a university like that, you'd be in big trouble. Big, big trouble. And, and yet, the level of, of anti-Semitism is astonishing. Beyond the pale. So what is the problem in America right now? Islamophobia. How can you even explain this? Like, like, what is the rationale? If I was a Muslim not living in America, I would be terrified by what Kamala Harris is saying. Because the last time they were tackling Islamophobia was uh, when the United States went and invaded Iraq and Afghanistan, if you guys remember. Right? Like, that, that again, like, those were big problems with Islamophobia. So, so now that I see Kamala Harris talking about Islamophobia, I'm wondering, like, what nations are they going to invade in the Middle East next? This is my question, you know, I'm, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm completely wrong about this. Hopefully I'm, I'm just looking at it as a nothing burger. But my European cynicism has helped me predict the future before. 
And this is what my personal opinion and my takes are. Now, again, if a lot of people are like, well, what, what's wrong with taking like Palestinian refugees? Well, well, the same people that are pushing for Europe to take Palestinian refugees, if you suggest that, well, why isn't Israel taking them? I mean, it's closer. It's in the same region. Why is it Israel adopting like the one state solution or something? And immediately, like you're going to be labeled as the closest thing possible that they can get away with to anti-Semitism for even suggesting that. But then the same people will suggest, well, actually, the United States and Europe and, and Canada should take them. And you're thinking, like, hold on, so like not not good enough for Israel, but good enough for us. Does that make any sense? That it doesn't make that much sense to me. Like, how do you explain it? How do you rationalize it? And, and the whole thing with Islamophobia is so you don't complain about it. Like, if you complain about it, censorship, remove, account suspended, demonetized, and all the good shit. And uh, not only that, again, I, I, posed, I pointed out in the previous article that uh, Hamas was voted. Like, it was the will of the people from that region. Right now, of course, not everyone voted for Hamas, and uh, there are Palestinians who don't. But the question is, like, how many of them are sympathizers that that you know support the cause, and and how many of them is it okay? Like, like ten percent, five percent? If you get a hundred thousand people, ten percent, how much is that? Is it okay if they're like sympathizers with that ideology? Is it fine? Do do we even have like the ideological tools to to de-radicalize them? Do we even care? Can we even talk about it? None of this is being answered, right? So the only thing that's being, you see Kamala Harris on television uh, being worried about uh, countering Islamophobia because there's a surge in, in hate crime in America. No, it's a, a surge in hate, right? So not even crime, just hate. And it's like, okay, but like, what about the, the hate from the far left? The, the anti-Semitism on display on campuses. Can we talk about that? Oh, that's not an issue. Now, of course, uh, people are pointing out that Biden's popularity is plunging amongst Arab Americans, and again, it's the conflict in the Middle East. That's why it's plunging. That's why, that, that's why it's bad, because when you take refugees from the Middle East, they still care about that uh, region, right? Even though they live in the United States, they still care what's happening in the Middle East. I, I, it's very difficult. That, now, sure, you can separate this from, like, one more person individually, you know, like, several people, or even many others may not genuinely, like, have these attachments, but when you look at a percentage and where you're analyzing this like Time Magazine did it as voting patterns, yes, like they, they definitely care about what's happening in the Middle East. And they should, by the way. So now it's, uh, oh, it's, it's close to election season. So let's talk about Islamophobia. Great, more censorship, because that's what's going to happen, right? Uh, let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.